Welcome everyone to the Adapted Cards February 2022 Community Call. For this one, we have a little bit of a shorter session, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be a good session. We have Alexis from Microsoft who's going to be showing us an Adaptive Cards video player bot in Teams. It's an interesting solution to a problem that we currently have with Teams. And then we're going to jump right into the Q&A section. Alexis, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So my name is Alexis. I'm part of the uh, global CSU organization. So I'm a technical engineer working on the uh, Teams integration scenario. And so I'm happy to present this use case for you today. Something that we uh, developed for customers and is now publicly available for everyone to use. The topic today is not exactly how to bring video content to an adaptive car, but how to play a video content from an adaptive car. So the, the challenge that we are trying to solve today is the following one. I've been working a lot with people from the communication team. Uh, basically, they, they, the, the organization are now adopting Microsoft Team as being uh, the solution to communicate and collaborate. And uh, as you move and use Teams more and more, you want to as well switch the way you communicate on the different Microsoft solutions. So uh, you want to move from emails to Teams, or at least you want to expand your communication opportunities and channels into Microsoft Teams. And so one of the main asks that we receive from customer is, uh, as a communication team, I want to use Microsoft Teams to send messages to various diverse and large audiences into my organization. And so one of the solutions that we use a lot, that we, we advocate this solution uh, very much because it's very convenient and very useful. The name of this solution is called Company Communicator. This is an open source project available on GitHub. And so basically what this solution does is to let people like, uh, I would call her Marta. Marta is from the communication team. She wants to send a communication to a group of people in Teams. So she has uh, um, an interface to prepare the message, provide a title, an image, some links, and some content. And this will be sent to the audience in the form of this adaptive card, right? So this is what the solution provides. And as you know, this is one example. And as it is an open, open source solution, uh, you can refactor this card with any content and as you like. So no limitation there. But the first question that comes very, very fast after we have deployed this solution uh, is, yeah, great. Uh, can I also send videos in this adaptive card? Can I also send modern media into this modern communication channel, right, and format? And so basically the, the solution and one of the first solution that we provide is to say, yeah, you can do that. You can use uh, animative GIF. Uh, so you just play your, take your video and then you just convert that to animated GIF and then you uh, send a GIF instead of a JPEG file or anything like that. Um, I would say that sometimes it does the trick, but uh, it doesn't last very long, you know, uh, and you, you know why. Uh, basically you don't have any sound and basically it's very short sequences. So we definitely had to find a better answer to this problem. And so this is how we try to investigate different options here. And so the good thing with Microsoft Team is that uh, this is a platform. And so as a platform, you have many ways to integrate your application into Teams. And so we thought a bit out of the box. So if today we cannot uh, play a video in the context of an adaptive card into Teams, what can we do else? Um, I think I don't know how you are familiar with um, the combination of adaptive cards, supported content, and channels. But basically, the challenge we have today is that you cannot play a video in an adaptive card in Teams. You could play a video in an adaptive card if this is not running in Teams. But the combination of the three does not work as of today. So the solution I will present today is to do exactly what you see here. Uh, and by the way, this is an, an animated GIF. Uh, so you see that you have a card, you click on it, and then you will play a video in a full screen mode, okay? The challenge being that you don't want to be redirected to web page, you want to stay and remain in the context of Microsoft Teams. Let's jump into a demo to see how things are working from a user experience. So I am in Microsoft Teams, I do have my application deployed, so this could be the so-called company communicator app that I mentioned earlier, and this is the demo sample or sample app that uh, I will demonstrate today. So 
you see that I do have this card. And this is the GIF. This is the animated GIF that I was uh, talking about. So this bot is a, a demonstrator to showcase how to play this video. So you have two options. One is to send and receive an adaptive card. And uh, this is the demo card. So typically this card will be exactly the same format as company communicator. So as a user, I will receive this card. You could animate this card with a GIF, but the cool things here is that now this play button tells you that you can click on that and you could, when you click on this button, you see that you have now a full screen that is displayed and the video will be loaded within this screen. Okay, so now if I can play, uh, if I press play, the video will play and here it's not exactly a full screen, but if I was in the desktop client, this will be totally full screen. Okay. I won't play the video now because with the bandwidth and so on, I think this will not be a great experience, but trust me, this is something that you can play. And this is a video hosted on the public endpoint. This is hosted on, on YouTube, right? And so once you, have, you are done, you play your video, you just close the stage view, and then you will directly be back into your uh, Teams environment, right? Playing with the chatbot. Let's take a look at the other card, the custom card. Because here it's, it's nice. I mean, you can play a video and the video is hosted on a public repository. But another request and very, very strong request from customer is, yeah, but I'm doing internal communication. So I want to have my content published on my SharePoint environment. I just want to have this video being accessible by people in my organization and not put, put that on the internet on YouTube, right? And you know that the challenge with content on SharePoint is that it required the user to be authenticated to access the video, right? And so the challenge here is how do I, will, be, will I be able to do exactly the same, but playing a video that is secured by Azure Active Directory? So the demo is the following in that case. Um, I will go on my SharePoint environment. This is my video hosted on any SharePoint. Obviously, I need to make sure that the user will have access to this environment, so it should be uh, open to the entire company. I go there into the details. And this is how I will get the path that I need. So this is the path to my video. OK, so I just need to select that. And so here I will provide two, three information. One, I need a title. Then I need to provide the link to the content, which is the video hosted, hosted on, on, on uh, SharePoint. And then I need to provide the website URL could it be it could be the same thing just the URL it could be the the website or the uh, uh, SharePoint site. Then I validate that. So what's happening here is that I'm providing this information to the bot, and then the bot will generate the specific URLs and how to uh, create the the stage view. Now you see that I have this button. I click on it, and this is my great video, and this is my content running into SharePoint, right? And you see that this, they, I didn't have to authenticate to access this video. So basically, I am authenticated in Teams, the, the, the SSO is working, and then I can play my video, okay? And here again, you have the full screen mode. You can go back to normal screen. And then once you are done, you can just close that. All right? So this was for the, uh, the demo part. Uh, so now the question is, how do we make that happen? How does it work? So we need two main things to make that happen. So the first thing is that you understand adaptive cards, and here we are not directly using a feature of the adaptive card. We are expanding the adaptive card with this stage view to play my video, right? So the first thing that we have to understand a bit more what is stage view and how to generate a deep link. You know that deep link is a way in Teams to point to specific application or start uh, an application in Teams, we use the same principle, but this time to open a video in a stage work mode from the adaptive card. And the, only, the, the other thing that we need to understand a little bit is that you may see that there are many things that we refer as being an app ID in our documentation. And so this could be a bit confusing because uh, there are different types of application ID or app ID. So, and we will see that in a, in a minute. So the first thing is the app ID that you find into Azure Active Directory. This one is used to register the app in Azure ID and to provide permission either to the app or to the user. So it's the delegation model or application permission model. Okay, so this is one 
app ID that we mentioned in the documentation that you can also see as being the client ID. The second type of ID that we uh, use is the app ID that you find in the Teams app manifest. And this is something that we refer to as well as being an external ID. So in Teams, the ID that is in the app manifest that you can control because you set this ID and this is something that is generated automatically, just have to be a new identity that is unique in your, your organization, but this is you that is defined the ID. This is the one that you put in the manifest and you will find this ID in Teams and in Center as well. Then the last one will be the internal ID. And this is the one that we need today. This one is a bit more trickier because it's not so, an, an application ID that we see a lot, a lot of time, right? And this one is an, an, an identity that we automatically generate every time an application is published in the Team Store or when you sideload an application, right? So this is challenging because you have control over the app manifest ID, but you don't have any control over this internal ID. And this is the ID that we need to use in this design, okay? Hot a bit more at how these things work. So the first thing is, I mentioned the uh, the uh, the tab view, right? So the tab view and the deep link to generate this stage view. So here is the pattern that we have to generate. So basically we'll use this pattern. So it's a type of deep link. Uh, so it opens a stage. You have to provide an app ID. And this is where the tricky thing happens. This app ID is the internal app ID I was mentioning earlier, right? And then you have to provide in, in the context operation, the content URL, uh, the website URL, and the name, which are exactly the three parameters that I enter in, into my demo app, the name of the video, the link to the video, and the link to the content, which is the website, okay? So this is what we need to generate. So first thing is that I need to get this internal app ID uh, somehow, I need to find a way to get this information. And the way we will do to, to do that is to use one of the graph API that uh, that lists all the application that have been installed for a specific user. So we'll use this Microsoft Graph API to ask, please give me the list of application installed for this user. So if the user has installed the company communicator app, either from the store or either as a siloed app, I will be able to get access to this ID thanks to this API, right? And I will use two types of permissions. So in my demo, I will use an application-based permission because it's just simpler for the setup, but you could also use a delegated permission so that uh, the user will use SSO and then you will get the permission to list the application installed for this given user, okay? So this is the first thing we do. The first idea was mentioning, the idea of my application in Azure AD. This is this one. And you see that in API permission, uh, I have granted my app the permission to list all the application installed for a given user. Again, this is an application permission, easier for me to do, but you could replace that by a delegated permission. Let's have a quick look at the Graph API, the Graph Explorer, right? And let's try to use this API. So the first thing we do, is I will call this API to say, please give me all the installed app for this user. So I provide the user ID, and this is a very easy information to get because when I am in Teams, all the messages sent to the bot will contain this information. So it's easy for me to get this information. Then as my application has the permission, it's consented to list the app for the user, this is the answer I will get, right? So this is not something that is really useful for me. So one thing, the first thing I need to do is to change a little bit this query to this one. So I need to expand to get more information. And you see that now it's a bit more um, useful for me because you see that I do have this internal ID and I do have this external ID that I control. So this external ID is the information that you put in the Teams app manifest and this internal ID is the one you are looking for to generate the URL and to trigger the stage view and open and play the video, okay? So now I don't want to have this all this list of, of, of uh, application installed for this user. I just want to have the ID for this application. So this is the final state of my query. My bot will query um, the, the Graph API to get the list of application installed for this user, but I just want to have 
the internal ID for this external ID that I know, which is my video player, player bot. OK. So. Now that this is in place. Um, we'll show you the link to the GitHub repository to deploy this solution, but uh, this is here on Office Dev. You have all the content and all the explanation to install the solution. Uh, and so if we jump a little bit into the code, the first thing you will need to provide will be the environment variable. So all this information are very, very standard. By the way, this code sample is um, as as is using the as a basis the EchoBot um, code sample. So it's really an extension of the EchoBot. So basically, this information is very standard. App ID, app password, app type, tenant ID, very recommend just to get access to the bot service and to access to the permission register on Azure Active Directory. And then the other thing that you need to provide will be the team's external app ID, which is the ID that you find in your team's app manifest. OK, so nothing nothing fancy. If you change the, the ID in the team's app manifest, you will have to change that as well. OK, going back. So this is for the environment properties. Uh, then the, the bot itself is very uh, simple. This is the main file, so this is where you will get access to the Azure bot service. This is where you will listen to incoming requests, and this is where you will route the request, the post request to your bot connector, right? All the AP messages will be routed to your bot. So nothing special, very standard. Uh, this is nothing specific here. If we look at the bot part, so all the requests again are sent to this bot connector. Here again, nothing really fancy. You see that for every type, every message, uh, I will just look at what is the request. And the only thing I will do, and I added in this sample, is this part. Because I need two things. One, I need to get an access token to query the Graph API. And two, I need, I need to get the information, which is what is the internal app ID based on the external app ID. So this is how I build this query is to use these two methods. One is to get a token, two is to get the app ID. OK, and so now these two methods are in here. And so to build this solution, uh, I'm using two lib libraries. One is the Microsoft authentication library to access to uh, Azure AD and the other one is the Microsoft Graph client to facilitate how I query um, the Microsoft Graph API. OK, so I think that you will see now, and this is why I wanted to demonstrate to you before, uh, but basically what we do here is that when we get the token and you understand that I have provided permission to my app to list the app install for a user, then the second thing I have to do is only to call the Graph API saying I want to get the app install for this user. I want to expand to have more information and I want to filter to the specific ID. OK, and so the output of this query will be just to give me this information that I need, right? And we can verify that uh, the bot knows how to do two things. It knows how to answer to hello, but it also knows how to answer to give me the app ID. So here what's happening is exactly what I've explained. I receive a request, I send that to the bot, the bot will query the Graph API and send me this information. And see, and you see here that I have all the information I needed, especially this one. This is the, sorry, this one, the Teams app ID. This is the one I needed, okay? There is one last step, which is how I automatically generate this pattern, right? So I need to generate that. And the way I generate this pattern is uh, here in my adaptive card. It's how I construct my adaptive card. And so, so this is very standard. It's just different adaptive card patterns, so nothing very fancy here. What is interesting is this, the URL encoder. So basically, this um, simple function will take pre-information, the video name, the video URL, and the website URL. Remember, these are the three things that I need. And then I just check if this is if the domain is on SharePoint or not. So if it is like on YouTube, I will just uh, copy paste this free information into this content URL pattern. So I just create the pattern that is expected for the deep link. And if the um, video is hosted on the SharePoint.com domain, 
I will create a, 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 diff, a slightly different pattern because to have the ACSO working in this situation. So if I want to make sure that when I click on the link within the context of team to access SharePoint content, I need to have this specific pattern. You may be aware about that already, but this is the team's logon page that will do the SSO automatically for you so that you don't have to take care about that. OK, and so this is the only difference between public and SharePoint video. All right. And one last thing that I can show you is the uh, app package and especially the Teams manifest. So here again, the external ID that you can change. You will see exactly the same pattern to access to your SharePoint site with the Teams logon pattern. And then as you want to enable SSO, there are some requirements and this is as well documented, but you have to enable some valid domains to access SharePoint and you need to enable SSO on your SharePoint site. If you don't put that, then SSO will not be enabled. There are three things for that. You have to set the web application info, you have to set the valid domains, and you have to use the Teams logon uh, page to enable SSO between Teams and SharePoint. With all that said, this is it. We saw that everything is there on this GitHub repository. And uh, yeah, this is what uh, the solution uh, offers today. Thank you so much, Alexis, for this demo. It's, it's great seeing an alternative to something that was not supported currently. And as you mentioned, this is a very common request from customers. So even going to the extent of the authentication to get it to work with SharePoint, that's that's just really great for, for the community here. So thank you so much for, for this contribution. You're welcome. I'll go ahead and share my screen to take over just for the Q&A section. All right, and we can start taking questions. If anyone has any questions that they would like to send out? So I think Andy has one in chat. What if the org has a global app permission policy set to disable custom and third party apps? However, there are custom app permission policies enabled that allow custom and third party and they're assigned to specific users. Any way to tell the Graph API to target apps that are based on permission policy versus everything available in the whole org? So if the question is, uh, can I? Uh, so basically here, the good thing that uh, the, the application permission policy will enforce the fact that some user can install the app or not install the app. So basically here with this call to the Graph API that says, can you give me the list of applications installed for these users? If you have an application installed, it means that the permission policy has been set for this specific user. So the, the app does not have to know what is the, app, the permission policy set. You just check the app install. And if you see the, the app, it means that the permission policy has been set for this user. So you don't have to check that. Uh, now to answer the question, is there a way to check the permission policy? This will be another API, but I would have to check if there is an API to provide the permission policy and the user a set for this permission. Um, good question. I, I don't have the answer for that. I don't remember. Awesome. We have another one in chat here. Yasser asked. Um, so just to understand this, to understand the idea of the solution. This bot is a way to send a video to any slash all users through personal chat, similar to a proactive message. And this is not possible with a company communicator. So company, com so the question is, I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I understood the question properly. Uh, I think the question would be if this is possible to do with a company communicator, or totally. if the solution is the alternative to that. No, no, it's uh, so company communicator is an open source project. So basically you can take the code and do whatever you want. Uh, the, the only difference here would be that company communicator is built on .NET and my sample is bit built on Node.js. So there is a mismatch in terms of programming language, but the principle will be exactly the same. So what I demonstrated here could be definitely implemented in company communicator and will work exactly the same way. All right. So it's not, it's not, yeah, it's really an extension that you can bring to company communicator. It's not like an alternative. It's just something you can extend and bring to company communicator. Yeah. Thank you for that question, Yasser. Do we have anyone on voice that would like to unmute and ask a question, either on the demo or adaptive card related? What happens if you don't, well, if you want to add a new app and don't have access to the admin center, which is coming up quite often, actually, in some way? I mean, we we sorted that by just 
asking people to work on the dev tenant and then we only deploy it pretty much to the live tenant. But uh, I've seen that coming up quite often. I'm not sure if you, uh, you have anything to say about that, Alexis. So the fact that you have an application deployed in dev and then somehow it is deployed to the, the, yeah, well, the production tenant. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, if you want to work on an app, you need to be able to register that app. And to be able to do that, you had need to have access to the admin center. So if you don't have access to the admin center, you cannot build an app. Pretty much. Um, so now you have to, the, the admin center is here if you want to publish the app and put the application into the, your app catalog. You could you just use the app for yourself, and this is the side loading, side loaded mode. But this is not how you operate if you want to publish the app to the entire organization. It's only for you because you are developing. The, the challenge with the tenant that, I mean, this, this application is multi-tenant. So the only requirement to work in multiple tenants is that you provide the consent for every niche organization where the application will be deployed. So if you are in the scenario where you deploy the app into the demo tenant, and then you want to go to production and targeting the same app, then you need to also authorize this app, you know, to, you have to also grant consent into the production environment. So it will work, but it's, it's, it's the same app and the, uh, you know, the app registration and service principle model. Uh, that, and this is, will, this is what will happen in that case. Mm. And then you need to have admin consent anyway. So, so two ways to see that. So in my in my demonstration, I'm using an application permission. So application yeah. permission equal admin consent on Azure ID, right? Now there yeah. is an alternative. You can use user permission, and then with user permission, I can provide the consent if I'm authorized to. But as a mm -hmm. user, I can consent. I don't need the admin to consent on my behalf. Okay, so but but if you do that, the the, the authentication pattern is a bit different. I would have to implement uh differently the authentication part so you could you can do that i took another choice because it was simpler for me to do that with an application permission mm -hmm. uh, it's often often a lot easier i mean if you work in in larger enterprise co size companies and all that then all these things get suddenly a lot trickier because there's so many regulations of what you're allowed to and whatnot that, that's correct yeah but as, as soon as you want to work with the graph APIs, you need to overcome this situation. And, and, uh, yeah. and this is, I would say, pretty standard, but you're right. Uh, there are, uh, this, is, this is a way for the companies to have a good control over which application is requesting which type of information. Uh, so yeah, but you're right. Hmm. We have any word for on uh, Power Automate support for version 1.4 of adaptive cards? Davies, I think Raul answered that question in chat, but for the folks that are not in chat, um, we have tried getting in contact with them. They previously had targeted Q1 2022 for supporting adaptive cards 1.4. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to get an update on that commitment, but it looks like when they do update, they'll be able to go straight to version 1.5 instead of having to go to 1.4. So at least we can look forward to that. We have... Yuva asking, this is a generic question regarding adaptive cards. When can we expect the implementation of search functionality in adaptive cards? That's an excellent question, Yuva. That's actually already available in adaptive cards. We have input.choice set for a static list of choices. So if you have a static list of choices um, and you use an input.choice set, you can now in version 1.5 and onward search and filter that list as long as it's a static list. Is there a way to use part of the code to send a video using Power Automate? Uh, yeah, so the, the answer to this question will be yes, uh, because there is no dependency on the adaptive card. Oh, no, sorry, uh, I'm wrong. Um, because you need to, you need to have, the, the answer could be yes, except for, for uh, SharePoint, because basically if this is a, a static content and a public URL, you don't have to, regenerate the uh, the authentication part. So basically you put a static content, you send the adaptive card, it's static, you click on the link, you open the stage view, it's fine. But if you have some type of authentication in place and so on, you may have some difficulties to the the, the pattern of the URL. We have to change every every for every niche authentication. And this is generated when you click on the link. So 
uh, there may be some limits if you do, if you do that with uh, poor automate. Hey JP, uh, how about a verbal hey, question? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You. Um, th this may be a, a real minimal uh, request, but I'm wondering if there are any practical examples of you know, using adaptive cards as a an FAQ type equivalent. Has anybody seen that in practice? I know we have this element in adaptive cards called a fact set, which is sort of a key value pair, and I can definitely see something like an FAQ being implemented with something like a fact set where you have your question and you have your answer to that question. I think I actually have that like hiding and, and showing things to make it like so you can open the question and see the answer. I did right. that. I, I thought I have it on the page, but I can't find it right now. I definitely have something like that. Well, well thanks, Tim. Well, if you didn't know, Tim, um, Tim has, has created madewithcards.io. It's a really good website that has a lot of templates for adaptive cards as well. And it looks like he has something similar to an FAQ implemented there. Well, cool. thank you, Ted. Yep, I'll, I'll reach back yeah. up. Yeah, you've got, you have my email anyway, Rob. Um, yes, I do. Yeah, I, that I, Well, I, it's, not on, it's not on the page. I'm pretty sure it did something like that. I just can't find it right now. All right. Cool, I'll reach out directly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we have another question. If my team's adaptive cards are on the latest version, then I can't connect them with Power Automate. Asking because I'm trying to use phrase adaptive cards, then link with Power Automate. So I think the question here is, if I have an adaptive cards on Teams that's running the latest versions, then I can't connect them with Power Automate. And I, I think that is true, since Power Automate right now is on version 1.3 and Teams supports version 1.4 for bot sent cards, then you won't be able to to get them working together just yet. So I, awesome. I have a question. I so I see that there's the demo card and the custom card option, um, and, and I, I, don't, I don't understand the difference. So I just missed a part. Like so, when when you ask the bot, you give information to the bot. The bot returns uh, the video. Uh, is there like a way to send it? Like, do you send the video now to, uh, can you send it to a user or a group of users? Like, is that, is, uh, how, how do we do that part of the, of the solution? Uh, so when we uh, interact with the bot, let's say if we choose custom card and then we put uh, the video URL, you know, all the information. Uh, so then, then what happens? Does it return the video to, to me or, or does it send the video to other users that I can specify somewhere? No, here the, the objective was really to create the demonstrator to demonstrate the principle and the architecture. So okay. uh, today, this is just a card where you provide the input, and then uh, it will the code will generate what you will send to your end users. So it's really to demonstrate the information that you need and how to generate this adaptive card and, and this deep link so that you can open the video with SSO uh, from an adaptive card. Okay. So it's a bot. It's a personal bot that only talks to me, and this is just a demonstrator in that case. Mm, okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. But this could be something that, if you have something like a an open Teams channel, you could use, right? If you include more people in in the Teams group channel, would they be also be able to see the video? Yeah, sure. I mean, the adaptive card is available to everyone that receives it. To, so. Uh, it could be via a personal chat or within a channel. Does it change? You have the card, and then everyone can click on it. The only requirement, if this is on SharePoint, that the user has access to the SharePoint site. So the only point of intention that don't send something that the user cannot access. So this is the only thing you have, you have to pay attention at if you use a SharePoint content hosted on SharePoint. Okay, great. Thank you. So while that might not achieve sending it to a user individually, at least if you want to share a video with a group of users, you might be able to do it that way by including them in the same Teams channel. We have a yeah. question from Carlos. An easy way to do that is that you put the video on the same SharePoint that is attached to the Teams. So basically you want to send a an adaptive card into a team, you put the video where, you know, on the SharePoint site below this Teams environment. So you're sure that everyone in the Teams will have directly access to this video. It's by design. Just wondering, 
uh, if I have a video somewhere where where when I was well at least when I was logged in before, uh, I should be able to see the video anyway because you have a working cookie for the for the SharePoint server. As long as you're in the browser, at least. Well, it would work on the desktop version, but if you run Teams in the browser, it would work anyway because you can technically open the video. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. But the good thing is that you have SSO, so you don't have to go first on SharePoint. It will work yeah. directly. So yeah. this is the beauty. Yeah. And it will work but, on desktop because the cookie stuff does not, does not mark work on, on desktop. Yeah, that's true. No, but uh, what I'm saying is it technically can work with any remote source, not even not even SharePoint, as long as the user opening the video has access to it. Yeah, but at the end, you have still to provide access to the user. So so this is the requirement, at least. You yeah. don't have access, you will not be able to access it. So yeah. even if you have a browser, you will not be able to authenticate to the video. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. We'll take one more question here from Carlos. We write any ETA for when Power Automate will support the latest Teams ACEs. I think since you were talking about supporting the latest version of adaptive cards, you're, you're referring to the adaptive cards version. We spoke about it earlier, but right now Power Automate is on 1.3 and Teams supports 1.4. The previous commitment from the Power Automate team was Q1 of 2022. We, we have tried reaching out to them. We're not sure if that's still on target. But it seems that when they do add the support, it'll be able to go straight to version 1.5. It won't have to, to go to version 1.4 first. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We will end the session, of course, with our resource slides. Here you can learn more about Adaptive Cards. We also have Tim's page, madewithcards.io, where you can find tools, sample cards, and, and more information there as well. Here you have links to all our M365 developer community calls, um, as well as their cadence. And if you want just an overall list, you can head over to aka.ms slash M365PNP. You will find this same list and more information as well. And this list is updated with the latest links as well. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you so much, Alexis, for, for being part of this community call and sharing this, this solution. And I'll Catch you guys next month. Awesome. Thanks, JP. Thanks, Alexis. See Thank you all. You. Have a great day and weekend. Yeah. Thanks, JP. Yeah.